Hey guys, it's um, Bo from Shabello again. Today we're here to talk about uh, milk techniques. So um, if we follow these few e easy steps, we can ensure that we're kind of making the best coffee that we can consistently. So I guess the first point um, is storage of the milk. So what I mean by that is uh, keeping our milk in a dry, obviously dry, but uh, a dark environment. So a nice dark fridge, no glass fridges or anything like that because light does affect how uh, eventually our milk comes out. We also want to make sure that our milk's being sorted about four to eight degrees. Um, any higher than that and it'll affect how we are steaming it and how it comes out eventually in our coffees. So the second point we'll cover today guys is uh, about temperature of our milks. So obviously different milks have different boiling points. The optimum temperature to heat up um, full cream we say is around about 70 degrees maximum. 65 will give you kind of the optimum taste in your coffee. It won't really overpower the espresso, espresso shot um, and it'll also give you still a nice warm coffee that you can enjoy. Skim milk, that again is around about 65 degrees, um, not too different to full. Soy milk, um, normally we try and keep that down to about 55, maximum 60 degrees. A lot of cafes these days are starting to use almond and coconut milk. Um, similarly to soy, they've got a much lower boiling point. So for almond, I like to keep it around 55 degrees and similar so with coconut. So the third point we're gonna cover today is uh, texturing of the milk. Probably one of the most important things in our texturing of the milk is we need to make sure that our pressure in our coffee machine is up around the 1.1 to 1.2 bars. Most of the time your coffee machine technicians will, will make sure that's quite on point, but it's always good to check. The second point in texturing our milk um, is I guess how much air we're letting into our jug um, when we're heating it up. So to let uh, the perfect amount of air into our milk, we need to have an optimum angle of our steam arm in our milk jug. So what I mean by that is that we need to make sure that our steam arm isn't, I guess, 90 degrees or perpendicular to the ground. We want it to be kind of sitting at around about 80 to 75 degrees. So that'll uh, help us create a whirlpool action in the jug, heat up the milk evenly, um, and allow the perfect amount of air to come into the milk when we're, when we're steaming it. It's also really important when we're heating up and frothing our milk that we, um, we don't try too hard. So we want to let the pressure of the steam of the machine create our, our froth and silky texture for us. It's really important to hold the steam arm just under the surface of the milk so we can let little pockets of air in at a time. Um, sound plays a really big part here. So it's really important to use all your senses when you're frothing milk. So the fourth point we'll cover today uh, is preparing the milk for latte art and pouring and pouring speeds. I guess the first point of preparation is if we have some small little bubbles in the, in the top of our milk, is just to gently tap it on the bench to get rid of those bubbles. Um, that's a really easy way to kind of tidy up your milk, I guess. The second thing you can do is gently shaking your, your jug from side to side or swirling around in a circle to kind of fold that flat milk in with the frothy milk so that when you go for your pour, it comes out nice and evenly rather than lumpy and, uh, and all that type of stuff. So the third point is obviously your speed of your pour. So uh, it's important to pour your, your coffees out in order. And what I mean by that is we all, always pour the cappuccino first, latte is second, and flat whites third. Um, cappuccinos we pour out quite fast. So we want to get that angle of the jug, you know, almost parallel to the, to the ground or even more so to get all that froth out into the mug as, as quickly as possible. Lattes similarly are quite a fast pour, not as fast as a cappuccino but still quite fast so we can make sure we get a nice amount of froth on the top. Uh, and on the other hand, flat whites, we really want to make sure that we're pouring those nice and slow so that all the froth stays back in the jug and we can get a nice flat consistency which flat whites, uh, which flat whites need. Brought to you by Cookers, the future of cooking oils.